Hey, what's up, everybody, man? So the Browns are currently on a bye week. And what better time would it be to talk about what we learned so far about the team and what needs to be done moving forward if we really want to maximize our potential this year? So as of right now, we're sitting at 2-2, two and two, which means we're 500. As you can see, we're tied for second place in the division. Really, we're third place because we lost to both teams that's in front of us. So, yeah, really, for real, for real, we in third place. And... Um, the first thing I want to talk about is Stefanski because Stefanski is really the reason why we're 2-2. Two two. We should at least be 3-1. I'm not ruling out the possibility of being undefeated, but realistically, we should at least be 3-1. We can also up here and debate about the Ravens game and how that game went and if we could have or couldn't have won that game. But we all can mutually agree that we should have beat the Steelers. You know, we should have definitely beat the Steelers. The Steelers couldn't even get... The Steelers, I don't even think they touched the red zone that game for real. Um, when they unless it was off turnovers, um, barely they barely moved the ball on us for real. You know they didn't really generate too much offense. Our defense was playing lights out. You couldn't ask for a better supporting cast from your defense. Like I'm just being a hundred, and it's been like that all year for real. You can't ask for better support from your defense. At some point, the offense has to do their part. And this is where Kevin Stefanski continues to fail. I understand Nick Chubb went down that week. I understand, you feel me? But Kevin Stefanski had three whole quarters to adjust, plus the halftime. You had the halftime speech and all type of shit, you feel me? You mean tell me you couldn't make no adjustments, no no twist in the turn to the game plan? You couldn't find a way to win when your defense is playing lights out? I'm just being real. It just doesn't make sense. Kevin Stefanski, it's time for us to be real. Kevin Stefanski is not the dude for the job. He's not the dude. He's cool. Yes, I understand. He 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 won coach of the year. He got to the playoffs. But that shit is expired now. You feel me? It's expired. Let's stop being high off of that shit. There's people still high off Baker Mayfield, bro. Yeah, Baker Mayfield, he had a good season that year. Yes, Baker Mayfield did go to the playoffs. And he did technically win um, a playoff game for us. He probably was the most successful quarterback so far on this team. But, hey, that does not mean these guys should be here to stay. You feel me? Kevin Stefanski had his one good year. What has he done after that? What has Kevin Stefanski done after that? He had a losing season, which flat out was really just a bad year. You know, we should have been successful that year. Then the next year, guess what? We have another underperforming year. People want to point to Deshaun Watts not being able to play to why we wasn't the best. But hey, if we want to be honest here and realistic, we could have won games with Jacoby Brissett. Jacoby Brissett, he was playing good enough as a backup to where we could win a lot of these games. Kevin Stefanski just does not know how to unleash the offense. He's scared that the way he calls offense is just not it. You know, it's not going to win games on a high level in this league because in this league, it doesn't matter how good your team is. You're going to be faced with adversity. You have to be able to go out there and make adjustments. You have to be willing to make adjustments for real. And that's one thing I've learned about Kevin Stefanski. Kevin Stefanski is a stubborn head coach. Think about it. He doesn't want to give up the head. He doesn't want to give up the play calling, which would help this team. You have an offensive coordinator. Just let him call the plays. You feel me? He doesn't want to do that. Kevin Stefanski, he, he shows he's stubborn with certain shit like the Cave York. He, Kevin Stefanski, he wants things. He, he has things going a certain way. He wants to see it through. He doesn't matter if, it, if it's going to benefit us or not. We've we seen it week in and week out, man. So... Like I said, man, he's just not the dude for the job. You know, his play call and his trash um, formation and shit is trash. Come on. He's like his fucking starting quarterback, Deshaun Watson, last year had to beg him all year to open up the playbook. Your star quarterback shouldn't have to beg before you open up your playbook. Stubborn. You feel me? He's stubborn. But, yeah, overall, he's just not, he's just not the dude for the job. You know, and it's always been his way. Look at Stephon Diggs. Stefan Diaz couldn't get off under Kevin Stefanski. Odell Beckham Jr. couldn't get off under Kevin Stefanski. Jarvis Landry regressed under Kevin Stefanski. You feel me? Amari Cooper's the only receiver really thriving under Kevin Stefanski to keep it a hundred. And he's not even, we don't even consistently bring out the best of Amari Cooper. We acquired Elijah Moore. For what? All they do with Elijah Moore is reverses. They make him play running back. Um, he's doing all these little motions in the backfield and shit. Every now and then he catches the ball, but Elijah Moore is a receiver that is a weapon all across the field. He's a weapon all across the field. We're underutilizing him. 
Peoples Jones is like he's not even a part of the team anymore. Like he gets catches here and there. We're not even utilizing him anymore. And the Joku, what happened to using the Joku consistently? You feel me? Like this offense is too talented to be so mid. This offense should be a top offense in the league. At least for the past three years. Like, we should be a top offense in the league. We should be hanging points on teams' heads. And it's evident that Stefanski, he's the, he's the problem. Because the offense is really the part that's just not getting better. The defense, we make the defensive coach change. Look at the defense. They're a top defense in the league. Top three, top five, you can argue the best defense in the league. That's how good that defense is. Under one coaching change. We got the same players. It's just the coach change. You feel me? We got a few additions, but overall, we got majority the same defensive roster. Yet, we're still having issues winning games because the offense is stagnant, it's stale, and it's just not producing enough points. And Stefanski's not adjusting when it matters. Both games that we lost, Kane Dodge Stefanski not adjusting. We already talked about the the, uh, the Steelers game. What about this Ravens game? You feel me? You got you got a backup quarterback that's about to start. You need to be able to adjust on the fly. Okay, I got this rookie in. Let's let's do this. Let's do some screens, some short shit. Um, let's do some. You know, just try to cater to him. You know, knowing that he's not ready, it's evident he was not ready. You know, he couldn't move the ball for shit. He turned the ball over, trying to do too much, etc. DTR should not see the field again this year. Like, really, we need to bring in a backup quarterback and just put him on practice squad. Like, that's how bad DTR is right now. He's not a good quarterback. And it's okay, you know? He was drafted in the fourth round for a reason. Fifth round, whatever. He was drafted that late for a reason. He's not good. He needs a lot of work. He should never be in a situation again to step up and lead this team. I'm just being 100% clear. 100% real, shall I say. And to be real with y'all, Kevin Stefanski, if he had some sense, he would have benched him. And put in P.J. Walker. P.J. Walker has experience starting in the league. He's won games. He's been in these moments. Put him in the game. He's not that good. But, shit, he would have at least gave us 14 points. There's no way he should have only put up three points last year, last week. No way in hell. But I'm saying this, this is something that's been going on for three years now, bro. The offense has been the problem. It was We couldn't get Odell the ball. We couldn't get Jarvis in the ball consistently. Now they gone. We still having the same problems, bro. Doesn't matter how much talent this offense has, Kevin Stefanski will never be able to maximize it. It's plain and simple. So he's just not the dude. I can go on and on, but y'all really need to let go of that coach of the year shit. That shit is done. That shit's old. It's in the past. This is a results driven league. I don't care how far we get this year. Kevin Stefanski is not the dude for the job. And if they care anything about keeping Deshaun Watson, they really need to make the change because Deshaun Watson. I don't think he's going to allow Kevin Stefanski to ruin his career. That's just how I personally feel. So if we if, if we want to have a franchise quarterback, Kevin Stefanski got to go. Plain and simple. Next, let's talk about Watson. We go touch brief on Watson because I feel like Kevin Stefanski goes hand in hand with Watson. But Deshaun Watson, yes, he, he has not played the best ball, like his best ball yet. But I think his best is yet to come. Um, we seen Kevin Stefanski adjust to play the um, the game plan and play style for that Titans game. Will we continue to see that? I don't know. You never know with Kevin Stefanski, man. But I think Deshaun Watson is coming along, and I think he would do better with a better head coach. You know, plain and simple. For all you people that's calling for another quarterback and saying we made a, a mistake trading for Deshaun Watson and all this other stuff, I hope that last week you all realized how shitty quarterback play could be in Cleveland. I hope y'all realize that, you feel me? And that should motivate you to get behind your starting quarterback. I don't care how much money he's making. I don't care what he's been accused of. This should give y'all every single reason to get behind Deshaun Watson to support him through his struggles. And just be realistic about the situation. Because if he had a better head coach, a coach that he doesn't have to beg to open up the playbook and spread shit out, Deshaun Watson would be thriving, you feel me? I'm just being real. Let's talk about the defense now. Defense has proven that they can win us games. The defense is literally the reason why we're even one game. Being honest, they keeping us in games and they're giving the shitty offense a chance to catch fire when we starting off low. This defense can win us games. Our offense just has to step it up, man. I'm proud of Grant Delpit. Grant Delpit playing his best. He's been healthy. Miles Garrett has a motor on him now. Jim Schwartz really gave Miles, Miles Garrett a motor. Miles Garrett be playing crazy. To Darius Smith, playing crazy. The D tackles, playing great. I understand last week, you know, we was giving up the run and stuff like that. But overall, 
and realistically, top defenses are going to have their games where they're not lights out, shut down. You feel me? But this defense is great. I like Jeremiah Uskamore. He's playing at his potential. Everybody's playing at their potential. The DB is playing outstanding. You feel me? Denzel Ward back at his peak, you know? Like, Jim Schwartz really made that much of an impact on his defense. I don't think we need to say too much more. We all can agree that this defense is really like that. And they're going to be important for us making making a, uh, a run this year. And they're going to have to pick up a lot of Kevin Stefanski's fucking slack. And last but not least, let's talk about the running back situation. A lot of people lost hope in this team's success, potential success, when Nick Chubb went down. And let me tell y'all something. And if you follow my Instagram page on Pip Sports, I already talked about this. But let me tell y'all, you feel me? You don't have to have an elite running back to win a Super Bowl. Look at the past 10 years. How many of those teams had an elite running back? I mean, I guess you could talk about the Seahawks. They had Marshawn Lynch. Other than that, teams just have running backs that can get it done. You do not need an elite running back to win games. You just need a running back that you can rely on and that service board and that can just get shit done. You feel me? Jerome Ford, I like Jerome Ford. I think he has a lot of potential. Um, he is not Nick Chubb, but none of these dudes are Nick Chubb on the roster. Pierre Strong, he seemed like he would be a decent rotational piece. Kareem Hunt, he's getting up to speed. He doesn't look bad at all. You feel me? So, realistically, as long as we have dudes that can just be efficient, I think we will be fine. This whole run here is going to come down to coaching. Plain and simple. Because coaching has won teams games and Super Bowls without a elite running back, bro. It comes all down to Kevin Stefanski, which I can see he's making an effort to adjust his game plan, to cater the game plan to Deshaun Watson's strengths, and let Deshaun Watson be the reason why this team wins games or at least has success offensively, you know? So, yeah, as far as the running back situation, um, I like the running backs that we have. You know, a lot of people talking about trading for um Jonathan Taylor. Cut it out. It's not happening, you feel me? It's not happening. It doesn't even make sense, you know? really just doesn't make sense sometimes we just gotta stop saying shit as fans and just let this be realistic you know so yeah we don't have nick chubb we can't expect nick chubb about these running backs but we can expect these running backs to be efficient and we can expect this offense to be adjusted that's the all it takes is the offense to be adjusted weekly man that's it we can win games man we got the weapons on and receiver we got the quarterback we got a good enough o-line What's the problem? Why, why we need an elite running back? Like I said, over the past 10 years, teams have won without an elite running back. So, hey, what makes us any different? You feel me? So, that's what we learned so far about this team. We learned that Kevin Stefanski is a problem. Kevin Stefanski is not a guy that's going to win this team a Super Bowl. We're, we're capped off with Kevin Stefanski. You feel me? We'll see how this year goes. You know, maybe he can flukely win a Super Bowl. That's the goal. But Kevin Stefanski is just not the dude for the job, man. And his defense, honestly, is probably going to save him his job. We seen, we seen, we seen the defense save Joe Woods his job when they was mediocre. I think the defense may save Kevin Stefanski's job, man. But Kevin Stefanski is not the dude, and I think we all need to start realizing that. You feel me? Um, but yeah, let me know what y'all think about the team. Um, you know, coming off the bye week, I think we play the 49ers. That will be a real challenge, you know, because the 49ers. They got Christian McCaffrey going crazy. They got Debo Samuel. They got a coach that knows how to adjust. They have a great offensive-minded coach. And, you know, they got a defense that's going to definitely give us some problems, you know. So, Kevin Stefanski will be tested right off the bye week. And we'll see what the fuck Kevin Stefanski has learned. Having a, having a whole week and a half off to prepare. Let me know what y'all think. Oh, also, real quick, though. For the people that talk about Deshaun Watson being cleared to play and not playing, look at it like this. Baker Mayfield was cleared to play all those games. Play, and it didn't do nothing for us. He ended up hurting his shoulder even worse. Haven't you guys learned your lesson from that? What makes Deshaun Watson a bad guy for not suiting up? And you really can't blame Stefanski for that either. Now, this is the time I'll take up for Kevin Stefanski. Deshaun Watson knows his body. He know he's not in his best shape. Hey, we're going to start the rookie. Everything comes down to Kevin Stefanski game plan. But y'all not about to sit up here and criticize Deshaun Watson for sitting up. I'm just being real, man. But, yeah, let me know what y'all think. Like, comment, subscribe. I got more content coming soon.